morning. Thanks so much for joining us online today and we're so glad to have you here. If this is the first time you're joining us online, we would love for you to fill out the connection card in the link below. Do not see this as a sign up form. It's basically just a way for us to get to know you a lot better and to stay connected with you. And finally, another way for us to stay connected is through our live groups which have now gone online via Zoom. And if you wanted more information about this, why don't you drop us an email at office at, leaving, at leavinghope-ca.org. Once again, thanks so much for joining us online and I really hope you enjoy the message.
Good morning, church. It is great to be back. I'm filming outside because it's such a beautiful day. You can hear the traffic behind you, and uh, I can hear the birds up above me. It's just too nice to be doing this indoors. And so uh, I want to give you a couple of announcements here for today. Uh, first of all, it's great to be back, and I have a short story to, to share about uh, my, my time being off and the surgery and everything. But first of all, I have an important announcement about Victorious. So roughly two months ago, when we had to postpone Victorious 2020, we weren't sure what we were going to be able to do and when. And so we just kind of leave it left it open ended, uh, threw a date on there for June 12th and 13th, just to kind of give us uh, an idea of when to shoot for and when to make a decision. But uh, the Victorious team has decided that they're going to make something available. So June 12th, they're going to do a free online mini conference that you can view on Facebook and uh, so watch that Facebook event Victorious 2020 for more details it'll be updated just check it out right now well after this is over check it out and then uh, make sure that you stay updated invite all your friends it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be free as I said so uh, make sure to uh, to attend that and if you've already paid for it and you'd like a refund, just call the office, let us know you'd like a refund. But uh, if you're wanting instead to just let that uh, registration fee become a donation, we can put that towards your donations for the year and then give you credit for that at the end of the year. So those are your options if you've already paid for the registration for the event. Uh, so I told you I was gonna give you a little story about when I was away. And uh, when I had my surgery and when I was in the hospital, I ended up in a, a bit of a kind of a negative mindset, to be honest. Uh, couldn't have any visitors. Uh, I was only seeing doctors and nurses through, through masks and all gowned up and they were extremely busy. So there wasn't really much time for visiting. And uh, so I ended up mentally and emotionally in a in a bit of a negative place. And the Lord was speaking to me about it here this week. And and I was reminded of Psalm 23. It says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. So we're supposed to rest in the green pastures. I was resting in a terrible place. I, I was camping out in the valley. And that's not where you camp out. You camp down, you camp out where there's green pastures, where you're beside water and where you have everything you need that's where you camp but i had camped out in a negative place and uh, i it took it took some self-initiative it took some time with the lord it took some encouraging from from friends and family members to get my, myself out of that place and so i just want to encourage you if if you are in that negative place if you feel like you're in that valley i, I want to encourage you don't camp there don't camp there pack up your stuff and get out of there camp in the green pastures where your store can be where where your soul can be restored thank you so much and uh you know i i'm feeling really good now i i i'm walking around it's great to be back at work uh i've done a few good walks i could i could probably you know run a half merit well walk a half merit no I, I can't, no, you know what, like, I, I, I can walk around the block a few times and, and not run out of breath, so I've been feeling pretty good, you know, um, not quite in my uh, pre-surgery state, but I'm getting there and uh, getting healthier and healthier every day, so thank you so much for your prayers, thank you so much for thinking about us and for, uh, for all those people that sent encouraging notes or, uh, or food by the house that was all very appreciated and very wonderful. Thank you so much. God bless. Hey, good morning, church. Welcome to Church on the Airwaves. And uh, today I want to talk about God's banking system. And uh, so I want to read verses from Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 19. It says, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, 
there will your heart be also. The eye is a lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Do you, no, man, no man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and, man, and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap nor, uh, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all of his splendor was, dressed, was not dressed like one of these. If that, which, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So let's just pray before we start. Father, thank you. Your promises of taking care of us are so exciting and they are so valuable. And particularly in the day in which we live where some people don't have a job, some people don't have regular money coming in, and some have not saved up. And Lord God, they could be worrying about not just clothes, but food particularly, and also shelter. But I thank you, Father, that you have promised that you would take care of us. And you gave us examples of the birds and of the animals and of the flowers and how you take care of them. And Jesus, you will take care of us as well. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be the master teacher here this morning, that you would help us to comprehend what you want to say to us. Help us to grasp it and how to apply it to our life that we too do not fall into that trap of worrying about everything in our life. Help us to live worry-free. Help us to live in your peace. And I thank you for your peace, Jesus. I thank you for your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're living in quite an environment of change today. And even around Esteban, there are some things that we have all gone through already or are going through, and it has affected uh, many things. Uh, it's affected education, closing of our schools and universities, businesses, they were told or commanded to shut down. Uh, church has not been the same since COVID-19. Personal care for others has also been changed and affected not allowed to visit anybody in the hospital or old folks' uh, home. Uh, finances have also been affected. No work, there's no finances, except what the government hands out. Mental and physical health is perhaps one of the greatest areas of, of change and where people have moved into fearful um, emotions because of what's happening in the world today. Just the uncertainty of things has caused fear to come. And when fear comes, fear destroys us mentally and even physically. And so these are some of the changes that have happened. We are commanded or, not, or we are told to accept the new normal. Life will not be the same uh, the way it was. And uh, uh, we don't know what that looks like. And that itself can cause some anxiety and concern in our life. And I was wondering, is there any place in the Bible where it talks about uh, this kind of change and yet people made it through? And uh, I think Jesus was born into an environment just like that. When he came and, he, and was born in Bethlehem in Israel, uh, 
Israel was not governing themselves. They were under the Roman Empire. Uh, the Romans had conquered Israel, and uh, they had a puppet king who was called, uh, uh, he was there, a Jewish leader. And, uh, but he was more, he thought more and behaved more like a uh, Roman than he did an Israelite. Another change in Jesus' time was the religion of Judaism. This was dominating and corrupting. Jesus said it this way. He says to the religious leaders, he says, you travel all over the world and you try to make disciples, but after you have made them uh, disciples, you make them ten times worse than what they were to begin with. And that's how bad the, the religion of Judaism was operating in Jesus' time. Sin was at a new high. And uh, it was everywhere. And so Jesus was born into this kind of a situation. The temple that was designed to be a house of prayer became a place of money changers, became a place of corruption and evil. And Jesus twice drove out those that were in the temple because they were using it for wrong purposes. Demon possession, which uh, happens to people when their souls are possessed by an evil spirit, uh, it was everywhere. Everywhere. And Jesus, uh, we, we know this because as we read the Gospels, we find that Jesus had to drive out many demons. Thank God that he had the power to do that. And uh, so people were delivered from demons. And, uh, and what a deliverance. What a, what a salvation that came to their life. In the midst of the change that Jesus was born into, he began to teach his disciples how to live. How to live victoriously. And it's probably not the way that we think. But as we're going to go through chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, we're going to talk about just a few things where what he taught his disciples, how they could live in an environment of change. Okay. And so he taught them how to live victoriously. So the first thing is the Beatitudes. In chapter 5 of Matthew, the Beatitudes, and we probably all know uh, the Beatitudes. And uh, the first thing that God wants us to know is this. Hey, I want you to be happy. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be joyful. And he says, I have created an environment. If you will follow me, I have created an environment where you can experience joy in your life. Even in the midst of trouble and difficulties, you can experience joy. I like the way James puts it in James chapter 1. He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. He says, you know, when things are not expected, all of a sudden you find yourself falling or moving into something that you weren't prepared for. He says, count it all joy when you fall into places like that. Why? Because God is going to give you wisdom. And later on he talks about that kind of wisdom. He says, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. And he'll give you wisdom and he'll show you what to do in those situations. But he wants us to be joyful. Joyful. And that is one of the first things that uh, Jesus was talking about here in the Beatitudes is be joyful. Now, it's not just going to be automatic. It's going to be, you know, as we follow through on what he's talking about. He says, blessed or joyful are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed or joyful are those who mourn. And all the way through, and I believe there's nine times when he talks about, you know, being blessed. And uh, if we follow through on that, we will experience what Jesus has set up for us. How to be joyful, how to be blessed, how to be happy in spite of the environment okay, that's happening around us here today. So he talks about that. And then he goes on talking about, hey, he says, you know, you guys are salt and light. You guys are, you know, you're the preservative in the world. In this world of corruption and evil, he's, he's saying, I have made you to be, you know, you preserve the world. You keep it from being destroyed. You are like uh, salt and light in this world. And then he tells us how to be like that as well. But I think that's a word of encouragement because sometimes we think that uh, we have no value whatsoever. But Jesus is saying that, no, we have value. We have value. We are salt. We are light. And we can be that to our neighbors, to our uh, community. And when everybody is negative and down on everything, we can be up 
and talk, you know, to people to encourage them and to inspire them. And so he talks about, you know, us being salt and light. And then thirdly, he confirms the fact um, that he has come to fulfill the law. And this was something that they were battling with all the time. And, uh, you know, like, how can I fulfill the law? And Jesus came and he said, listen, guys, he said, just the way you can't, yeah, you can't handle your sins. He says, you can't handle the law neither. I have come to fulfill the law. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. I've come to do that for you. Just the same way that I deal with your sins, because when I died on the cross... You know, I died for all of your sins. He said the same way. He says, I have taken care of the law too. And if you know your life that is in me, then you will know that, uh, that we are able to live the way that God wants to live in his righteousness and in his goodness. Then he gives new definition to murder and adultery and divorce. And you can read this as you go through chapter 5. And then he teaches us not to make any oaths. Don't don't uh, uh, say that, you know, uh, I swear my mother's apron, you know, that my wife is a better cook than my mother-in-law. <laughs> you know, don't make oaths like that. It's, it, not to make any oath. He said, just let your yes be yes and your no, no. Okay, and just uh, follow through on simple things of that nature. And then he talks about, you know, the Pharisees and the religious leaders are talking about an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He says, I'm going to change that. He said, my kingdom is different than that. My kingdom is this. Love those that hate you. Love those that hate you and pray for them. And we say, well, that's, that's dumb. It's not really dumb. It's really effective. It's really effective. And I've discovered this in my own life over the years that, you know, those people that oppose me and maybe don't like me or have said something, you know, uh, maybe not too encouraging to me, if I love them in my heart, even if I can't say to them face to face that I love you, but you know, if I say it in my heart, I love you, I find that I am set free from that. Okay, and so he's talking about loving and praying and blessing our enemies. Then he's talking about motives. Motives. He talks about the hypocrites or the religious leaders in his time, and, and he says, you know, you guys are doing it all wrong. <laughs> You're doing it all wrong. He says, you are... Uh, you want to give uh, you know, some money to the poor, but when you do that, you blow a trumpet. And I don't know if they actually had a trumpet, but that's what the Bible says. They blow a trumpet, let everybody know, look at, look at me, watch me. You know, I'm giving my alms to the poor. And he says, watch your motives when you are helping other people. He's not saying don't do it. He's just saying, just be careful, you know, when you do it. And then he talks about praying. And I can just kind of see the uh, hypocrites or the religious leaders, you know, they're standing at the street corner, and he talks about street corners, and they're, they're watching for the crowds to come. And when they see perhaps, uh, you know, uh, uh, five people walking together, coming their way, you know, when they come a little bit closer, and then all of a sudden the hypocrites, you know, they got their hands folded, and they're praying out loud, you know, and looking pious. And he says, don't be like that. He says, when you pray, he says, when you pray, Get into your closet. Get into the place, you know, all by yourself. You don't have to be public when you pray. Okay, and so uh, he talks about, he talks about motives and then also about even fasting. And there was, apparently there were some that were fasting in his day and they would in the morning, then, you know, getting out of bed and uh, they wouldn't comb their hair. Matter of fact, they'd put dust on their head and uh, they wouldn't wash their face. They'd put on their most rattiest clothes that they had in their closet. And, uh, you know, they would walk around like, I haven't eaten for a week, you know, looking like they are fasting. And Jesus said, no, when you are fasting, he says, put on the festive garments. Put on your most joyful, you know, exciting clothes that you've got. And don't look like you're fasting. Look like you're enjoying life. And even though you are fasting, but you're enjoying life. And so he's talking about them about motive. And then what I really want to get to today is that our earthly treasures and our heavenly treasures and we're going to talk about that because Jesus talked about that in chapter 6 here of Matthew. And we want to look at that. And I want to use a principle that we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Where it talks about, it talks about our bodies, 
you know, now in this life, but also after we, the resurrection. He says, first that is which is natural, and then that which is spiritual. He says, right now in this life we have a natural body, but when we leave our bodies here, we have a spiritual body. And so he's talking about that, but it's a principle that we find not just concerning our bodies and death, but it's a principle that we find all the way through Scripture and all the way through life as well. And so today when I talk about God's banking uh, system, I want to talk about, you know, opening an account. When we look at the natural first, and then I'll look at the spiritual. But opening an account, I remember the first time when I uh, had a little bit of money to put into a bank, and uh, those first years when we were married, we had precious little. Yeah, every bit of our, our, our paycheck went to pay for groceries or rent or whatever else. And we didn't have any opportunity to, you know, to use a bank at that point. But when we had a little bit of money and I wanted to open an account, I went to the bank. And of course, they don't know me. You know, and so the first thing that they want to do, and they say, okay, now you've got to tell us who you are. Okay, you got to tell us who you are, and, and so we need to know your name, what's your full name, and they'll probably have a sheet of paper, and you got to fill it out, your first name, middle name, last name, and then there's a place for your address, place for your phone number, and then, you know, like, where do you work? What kind of a job do you have? And then this one that I thought, oh, why do they need to know this? But they asked, you know, like, what's your income per year? And uh, so, of course, you've got to give your, uh, your income. And then they, they, they say, well, have you ever been bankrupt? You know, like, what's your financial history? And uh, so everything is based on, on you, on me, you know, who I am, what I do, what I have done. It's all based on me. It's my identity. But in the spiritual part, when we talk about our account with God, you know, when we talk about that, it's got nothing to do about me. It's got everything to do about Jesus. It's his identity that we take on. And it's his identity that God the Father honors. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that we are accepted by the Father because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. And so the Bible says that when we are born again, when we come to Christ, that we are placed into him and he becomes our identity. And so when we open a bank account in heaven, you know, we need to, first of all, come to Jesus. And how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. Very, very simple. And uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9, it says, you know, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's not by the works that we can do. You know, everything that Jesus has done for us, all we have to do is come to him in faith. And God provides the grace for us, okay, to come. He's not going to turn anybody away. Matter of fact, Jesus said that. He said, if any man come unto me, he says, I will not cast them away or cast them out. He said, everybody can come. And, uh, you know, we need to come to him. And we need to confess that he is our Lord and Savior. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you know, we shall be saved. Salvation is our bank account with God the Father. Salvation is our bank account. Okay, and so if we make that kind of confession, if we have that kind of belief, we have come and we have opened an account in heaven, and we can start making use of that account as well. Okay, so the second thing, if I go to my natural bank, and I've given them all the information about myself. The second question that they will probably ask me is, what kind of an account do you want to open? Checking account or savings account? Okay. And uh, so if never had any one of those before, I'd probably say, well, probably a checking account. And uh, so we open, you know, whatever account that we want, uh, want open. In heaven, there is no different accounts. There's just the one. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, he says, I'll give it to you. Anything in my name, I'll give it to you. And so there is no different accounts, and, and we can come to him at any time, you know, and we can ask of him. And so there is no, no special account, 
You know, just anything works with God as long as we've opened account with him by being saved, accepting him freely. Okay, we can do that. The third thing is making a deposit. I find that when I open a natural bank account, you know, they'll say, well, you know, to open this bank account, you've got to make a deposit. You've got to give us some of your money. And uh, that's how you open it. And, uh, but with God, it's totally different. We don't have to give God anything except ourselves. You know, when we open our bank account with him. And uh, that's what we do. We give uh, ourselves to him. And uh, then the Bible says that Jesus provided everything for us. That we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You know, God has provided it all through Jesus. And we are heirs with Jesus Christ. And he's the one who shares his inheritance with us. He shares that with us. And not when we die or after we die, but even now in this life, he shares his inheritance with us. And so we can have it right now, right now in this lifetime. Okay, so we don't make a deposit. Jesus made it all. And God said, hey, I accept that. Okay, and so we can freely then ask of him and he'll give it to us. Now, <clears throat> the importance of a signature when we open an account. I, every time I, there's a transaction that I have to do in the bank, they, they have about four different sheets of paper and they say, sign here, 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 and here. And, uh, you know, and so our signature is so important, you know, when we talk about the different accounts in, a, in the natural bank. Our signature is so important. And now to take the place of a signature, of course, you know, we can take out a bank, account, uh, bank card. And that is in place of our signature as long as we have a password. The password stands for our signature on that. But what is our signature with, you know, with God's bank account? Our signature is Jesus himself. Jesus himself. This is why we pray in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he's our signature. Everything that we have is because of him. He has provided everything. He said, listen, he said, if you guys need peace, he said, listen, I leave my peace with you. If you want joy, it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. He said, if you want patience, he said, that's part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's made available to you. You can have it. I've already provided it for you. Ready provided it for you. And so he's the signature. And so we pray. Always we pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's power and authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so that's the signature that we have. Now, the currency, and I've kind of already uh, talked about this, but in the natural bank account, it's physical money, or nowadays it's transferring from, you know, your job into your bank account, and uh, it's done that way, but uh, it, it's physical money that we have. And... But in the spiritual, of course, it's different things that we, that we have. Our currency that, that Jesus provides for us uh, is Jesus himself. Jesus provided himself as currency. He says, if you want anything of me, it's yours. It's yours. Everything of me that you want is yours. And I've learned how to make this prayer. Jesus, you have provided everything in yourself that I will ever have need of. And I'm coming to you today because this is what I need from you. This is what I need from, from you because it's found in you. And so he provides himself okay, when, we, uh, when we come to him. Uh, he also provides he, different things like salvation, peace and joy and authority and healing and comfort, strength and blessing. And these are just some of the things that Jesus provides for us. And so when we come to him, all these spiritual things, we talk about spiritual, but they're more than spiritual. They're also, you know, part of this natural world that we live in. We need these things in our life. This goes back again. Listen, Jesus was saying, if you want to live successfully in this environment of change, he says, I want you to be joyful. I want you to be joyful. And Jesus provides everything for us so that we can be joyful in this world and in our life right now no matter what kind of changes are happening around us and outside of us but jesus provides a stable 
and a constant environment in which we can live. Now, we need to ask, however. You know, we need to ask. He says, you have not because you ask not in James. You have not because you ask not. And so we need to ask. We need to pray. We need to talk to him. And we need to confess, God, you know, like, I, I need that. And if you're like me, you probably try to do a lot of things all by yourself, you know, and it hasn't worked. Well, I've got to work up some joy today. Well, it's not going to work, folks. You can only get it from Jesus. Only get it from Jesus. And no matter how hard we try to work up something, you know, it's not going to be there because these things only come, you know, from the very presence of Jesus. And so we need to ask. And he wants us to ask. And he wants us to ask in faith as well. And that's how we make a withdrawal. I pray and I believe. I pray and I believe. I pray and I believe. And again, don't pray like he talked about, you know, the, the Pharisees and the hypocrites. You know, they, they pray in street corners just so they can be seen of man. No, you're praying, you're talking to a loving father. You're talking to someone that loves you and cares for you and has only good things stored up for you. His thoughts towards you are good and not evil all the days of your life. And if we understand the good heart of God, we can come to him at any time and we can make withdrawals, okay, from the, our spiritual bank account. God's banking method or system, okay, is that we can come in faith and we can ask and he will give. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, there's also the mingling of the spiritual and the natural. You say, well, those things were all spiritual. Yeah, and, and God can, you know, yeah, he provides all the spiritual things that we need. But what about my natural life? What about my natural life? Like we talk about, you know, financial money. Uh, if I don't have money coming in, I'm not going to be able to pay my rent. I'm not going to be able to buy groceries. We're not going to have any food on the table. What about my natural needs that we have? And so I want to just finish off. Uh, here this morning talking about the mingling of the natural and the spiritual because God is concerned not just about, you know, the pie in the sky or, you know, spiritual things. He is concerned about every part of our life, the natural part of our life as well. And so the part that we read in Matthew chapter 6 where he talks about do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break through and steal. He said, listen, I want to give you a priority. He's not saying, he's not against money. God is not against money. He's not against having a bank account. He's not against, you know, having lots in our life. But what he's saying is, listen, put it in priority. Put it in priority. He says, don't store this up, you know, on earth. Because the things... <laughs> you know, the money and the possessions that we have, all the goods that we have on earth, we can't trust them. We don't know what our government's going to do. We don't know what this world's going to look like in six months. We have no idea. And our money can vanish just like that. Just like that, it can be gone. And so he's saying, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth. But he says, make it a priority, he says, to store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. And how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we store up treasure in heaven? And later on, Jesus is talking and teaching his disciples, and he said, listen, he says, if uh, there's somebody that needs a drink of water, you provide that drink of water for them. And he says, and then by doing that, he says, you're storing up treasures in heaven. He says, take care of people around you, whatever the needs are, and even perceived needs. You know, go out of your way to help people. And when we help people, you know, we're storing up treasure in heaven. It's not going to be finances, you know, like a big bank account in heaven. You know, we're not even going to be concerned about that when we get to heaven. All we're going to be concerned about is Jesus. I'm just so thankful I made it. <laughs> but not on my own merit, but because of Jesus Christ. You know, but we can store up that treasure in heaven by helping other people, helping other people. And so I would really encourage, you know, to do whatever you can. Again, we're living in an environment where there are people who've got needs, and, and we need to, uh, as much as in us, you know, we can fulfill those needs. If you don't have a lot of money, 
you got cold water in your faucets. You know, fill a bottle up or whatever. Take it to somebody who doesn't have water. Or just things of that nature. Maybe it's a blanket. Maybe it's a pillow. Maybe, uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, just some canned food or whatever. You know, but take it to people. Help them out. You know, again, have a good motive for this. And have the right attitude when you do that. You know, you're helping people. Helping people. And you're storing up treasure in heaven as you do that. And then he says something, and he says it six times in, the, in these verses here in Matthew chapter 6. He says, don't worry. Don't worry. Six times. He says, don't worry. Don't worry. He says, don't worry. <laughs> he says, you know, about food, about clothing, about, uh, you know, what you're going to drink and, and, uh, and what you're going to look like and all these different things. He says, don't worry. Why could he say that? You know, when we don't know about tomorrow, when we don't know if we're going to have any money, when we don't know if we can pay our rent, when we don't know if we can provide food for our children. And yet he says, don't worry in the midst of this kind of environment. He says, don't worry. He said, listen, look around you. In the natural, he said, look at the flowers. He said, look how beautiful they are. He says, I clothe them. And if I can take uh, care of the little flowers, I can take care of you. And so as far as food is concerned, he says, I feed the birds. <laughs> You know, they don't worry about, you know, I have bank, I got to put food in my bank account. You know, they don't store it up. They just peck away at the, you know, the seeds that are on the ground. And they just go and, or if you're a robin, of course, you pull out those worms out of the ground. And he says, listen, I take care of you. I take care of them. And if I take care of them, I can take care of you. And so he's asking us, okay, to not worry. And this is really important because all of us can worry. I t have times when I've got to catch myself because worry and anxiety wants to get down into my soul. And, uh, you know, I meditate on things that are negative and I've got to get myself out of that. And I need to listen to what he said here. Don't worry. Don't worry. And uh, we need to follow through on that and not worry about things in this life. Hallelujah. Then I want to use one more example when we talk about getting our needs met. And this comes from Matthew chapter 17 and verses 26 and 27. And I'm not going to read this, but you can read these at home. And uh, Jesus and his disciples, apparently they were by the Sea of Galilee. And uh, there was tax collectors that were walking around, people, you know, and they had their whatever the container that they had for collecting taxes. Now, these were not the Roman taxes. These were not the Israelite taxes. These were the temple taxes. Okay, and so they had people walking around uh, all over Israel and, uh, you know, and asking for, you know, a tax for the temple. And uh, no doubt they, that, that was their job. No doubt they would get paid. And so uh, one of these tax collectors talked to Peter and says, does your master not pay temple tax? And Jesus said, oh, sure he does. So then Peter goes to Jesus and he says, hey, master, do we pay temple tax? And he says, listen, he said, we'll pay it right now. Peter, you're a fisherman. Take your line, throw it out in the lake. And he says, the first fish that you get, he says, open its mouth and you'll find a money in it. And that money will be just enough to pay your temple tax, not just for you but for all of us, for all of us. It's amazing how God works. It's amazing how he works. And, and, and he's got so many different ways of providing for us. Who would have ever thought that a fish could pay for our taxes? I wish that was true. I'd be out fishing every day. Okay, but this is what happened, you know, in Jesus' day. He knows how to, how, how to meet our needs. And he does it in some very unordinary ways. As we read all the way through the Bible, you know, how God provided for this and that. And he does it in so many different ways. But we can trust him. We can trust him because he will meet our needs. But we need to listen for him. Listen to hear what he has to say. And then we need to be obedient. You know, if I was Peter, I'd probably look twice at Jesus and say, What? A coin in the mouth of a fish? I fished all my life. And with a net, I probably brought in hundreds, maybe thousands of fish. 
I've never seen a coin in a fish before. But he was obedient. And he went out. And sure enough, that first fish that he caught had a coin in his mouth. And it was enough to pay for all the taxes. God is able to provide. God is able to provide. And so I want, from this little story and illustration, there's a couple of things that I want to say. Uh, God is oftentimes going to ask you to use what you have. Use what you have. You know, maybe you don't have very much, but use what you have. Remember the widow in the Old Testament? Uh, her sons were going to be taken as slaves. And she was a wife of a prophet who had died, and, and uh, they had a debt. And, and uh, so the prophet came to her, and, and she complained. And her, she said, listen, this is, what the, the, this is what our life's all about right now. I'm going to lose my sons. I've already lost my husband. I'm going to lose my sons. I need help. And so the prophet told her, he said, what do you got in your house? What have you got in your house? And she says, well, I've just got a little cruise of oil in my house. She says, go get it. Then to get your sons and tell them to go around to all of their neighbors and to borrow all kinds of containers, you know, big ones, small ones, medium-sized ones, and bring them back to your house. And she was obedient to that. She didn't ask him how it was going to happen or what was going to happen. She was just obedient to what he had to say. And folks, this is what I want to encourage you. Be obedient to what Jesus is saying to you. No matter if it's small, if it sounds ridiculous, but be obedient to Jesus because oftentimes that's where your answer is going to be. That's where your needs are going to be met. You know, when we walk in obedience to Jesus. And so she did. And so they, all these containers were in. And so Jesus took that little cruise of oil that she had and he started to pour out. And you know the story. You know, he poured one, he poured into one container, it filled up, went to another container, and that filled up, and all the containers were filled up. And then he says, now go and sell the oil. And uh, the Bible says that there was enough money or revenue from the selling of that oil that she could live the rest of her life and her sons didn't have to be slaves. And so God knows how to provide. He knows how to provide. And so use what you have. You know, it's not very much sometimes, but we need to use what we have. And then secondly, believe for the unimaginable. You know, when it doesn't make sense, when we say, you know, like, how, how does this make sense? You know, God wants me to do this. Don't try to reason it out. You know, uh, we just have to have faith. Have faith. We need to believe. Believe for the unma unimaginable, what we can't imagine. Like, <laughs> If I try to imagine something, how is this going to work? Forget it. It doesn't matter how it's going to work as long as it works. But we need to pay attention to what God is talking to us about. And we need to be obedient to that. And we need to believe and obey and do what he says. And God will meet all of our needs. God will meet all of our needs. It wasn't that many years ago when I, I was finished pastoring for a while. And uh, <clears throat> I was wondering how was I going to provide finances. And so I found stuff around me. I found, you know, I did a little bit of painting. And so I thought, well, I can go into painting. And then from painting, it was into drywalling. From drywalling, it was into plumbing. And, you know, but every one of these things, I had to learn some of these things. But I had to be willing to step out and do the unimaginable. Do the things that I thought, I don't know how to do this. You know, I could have thrown up my arms and said, I don't know how to do this. You know, but we can learn how to do it. Use what you have and then believe for the unimaginable. You know, God is able to provide for you. And I really want to encourage you who are really struggling with finances. You know, God will meet all of your spiritual needs. Thank God for that. But he also wants to meet your physical needs. You know, look around in your home. Look around inside your own heart. And see if you can find, you know, what God is saying. He said, what do you got in that closet? What do you got in the shed? He said, I want to use that to meet your needs. And so we need to be obedient to that. And then lastly, we need to give of the little that we have. Jesus was teaching this principle. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. He's not talking about give out of your wealth. 
He says, give out of your poorness. Give out of your lack. Give out of the little that you have. He says, when, we lear- when you begin to learn this principle of giving out of your lack and out of the little bit that you have, then God will provide the more. He will provide the more. And I, I just really encourage you, if God is talking to you about that, you know, find a way. Ask God, what do you want me to do, God? I, I have lack in this area, but Lord, I've got something there. But if you want me to give that away to somebody else, give me some direction, God. And I'm going to believe that you're going to meet all of my needs. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. God is able to meet all of our needs. So I want to just really encourage you this morning, and I, I close in prayer. And I want to encourage you to listen to God, be open to Him. You know, you've already established, if you're a believer, you've already opened a bank account with Him. He's on your side. He's on your side. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to help you not only spiritually, He will also help you with financial things, natural things as well. So I really want to encourage you to be open to that. So let's just pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak to people right now, Lord, about what they have, and Lord God, what they can give away. And Lord, you have promised that if we give, it shall be given unto us. It shall be given unto us. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you would teach us, Lord God, how to use the things around us, Lord God, for your honor and for your glory, and to help people. Help us, dear Father, not to focus on treasures on this earth, but focus on treasures that are in heaven. And Lord, those who have lots, I pray that they would open the floodgates of their plenty and begin to give to those who have lack today. And Lord, there's some that uh, have, they've got a lot more money than what they need to retire on. And Jesus, I pray that as you speak to them, they will begin to find ways And listen to your voice and find ways to help other people. And so, God, I just open up that whole area, Lord God, of the financial and the physical. And I just pray to your Father that you would teach them and that you would help them. And I know that you will always be faithful. Always, always be faithful. And you've asked us not to worry whether we're the ones who have lack or if we have, or if we are the ones that have lots and you're asking us to give some away, whatever place that we fulfill in those two areas, I pray that we would not worry. Not worry. Because you'll take care of us, God. You'll take care of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your people this morning, Father. Bless your people. And Lord, should there be any that are watching this morning who've never opened that bank account in heaven, that they would do that this morning and that they would just simply invite Jesus to come into their life, that they would confess you and that they would believe in their heart that, God, that you have raised Jesus from the dead, that he's alive. If they would do that, they will become the children of God and then they can share in all that you have for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just pray to your Father that if there's some that are listening, if they need to take that step, they do it this morning. And Lord God, I know that you will bless them. And you're just waiting for them. You're watching for them. And so I just bless them too in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thanks, folks. Bless you this week. Have a tremendous week. Remember, trust God. God's got a tremendous bank account for you. And if you're a believer, you've already opened it. Now you can use it by faith and by asking. Hallelujah. God bless. We want to thank you once again for joining us today. And we really hope that you enjoyed the worship and the message that you must have listened to just now. If you want to be a part of what we're doing right here at Living Hope, we welcome you to give at livinghope.ca.org slash give. And there you can actually pick any giving option that works best for you. Once again, thank you so much for joining us and we wish you a great Sunday and a great week ahead. Stay blessed.